Thank you so much, Kini. Amazing to hear from Nuk as well, especially praising his top laner. First things first, Adam, congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much for joining us. So from the cast, your experts in the mid lane telling you that actually you may be better than him. That's not something that I expected to hear. <laughs> I mean, let, let's say I will not disagree with his statement. All right. <laughs> let's not be humble, uh, it's I, fine. I will not disagree with, you, with what he said, but um, I mean, to be fair, like, for, especially with like striker, yeah. like he knows Nuke and me like for a long time since 2020, so like more than four years now. And since this time, I've uh, I've always been you know playing this Cassiopeia top, mm -hmm. and um, it's actually the first time I think in my entire career that I'm actually pulling her you know on yeah. stage. So it was basically my first Cassiopeia in competitive. So um, I would say she can be in like a decent spot in some drafts, and that's why. Uh, that's why like striker gave me like the trust mm -hmm. of me picking her like uh, today and flexing it with Nuke as well. We could see like he played it mid and I played and I played her top. So it's like it's another pick that we actually added. Uh, I, I would say it's already like not comfortable for teams to draft against us usually. Mm -hmm. And if we keep adding like you know those flex pick or those kind of niche pick in a way, it can be even harder for for the for the enemy team. Can you tell me more about the preparation you had coming in today? Because um, Medic, uh, I think that we all agreed on the fact that BDS's preparation, especially when it comes to draft, was spot on, honestly. And it came also to answer the answers that they had in game. Yeah, something we noticed last week was it, it felt like you were giving a lot less agency to ice in later game uh, portions of the match with like the Jin and with the Ziggs. He didn't have this hyper carry that we saw him on today. And this week felt very much more like reverting to the BDS style. The idea of we have a couple of tanks, we can play front to back during team fights. We can also look for, you know, cannon flanks and such, but it felt very much more standard BDS today. Was that an intentional change from you guys? I mean, it can be intentional, but it's like, it's not like 100% true, for example, sure. because uh, if you check, for example, only our, like the regular split of summer, mm -hmm. like we finished eight one and we've been spamming a lot like this AP jungle. And mm -hmm. usually with like AP jungle, you're seeking for like utility ADC. So that's why, like, we could see Ice being more on the like the utility style. So like some Ash, some Jin, and now you can see like in this meta, some MF is popping. We played MF last week, and it's like, it's like actually in this meta, like I'm not quite sure like what is really OP. So it's like we keep exploring stuff, uh, and and we try to see like what can work the best for us, and uh, maybe today like we managed to pick like some maybe stronger late game carry for Ice. But uh, maybe it was also like super specific to SK, for example, because I don't think that you can actually draft this against like any other team. Because of course, if you play like Jinx or Zeri, you're super weak early. And uh, SK wasn't like the most decisive team in early game today. Like we could see, I think they were giving like so much free stuff to us. Then they shouldn't. Then sorry, they shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. So it's like. We pick free scaling, they don't really do much. It was like kind of like the easy way out for us because we knew that if we have scaling and they don't do much in early, I think we would win. So it's like, yeah, we're just chilling. So then if last week when you played up against Fnatic and you ended up losing 0-3, those were drafts that you were more comfortable with. As you say, you did play them during the regular season as well. What was actually the issue for BDS last week? Why did you seem so discoordinated as a team? <laughs> I or mean, sorry. yeah. I mean, yeah. we had to ask. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, of course, uh, our performance last year, uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, sorry. Oh, two uh -huh, weeks. Yeah. Two, yeah, two weeks ago. No, last week. No, last, week. last week. Yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah. Last week. Yeah, last week. Uh, our performance was like not the best. Uh, actually, it was not like the BDS that we had today. For example, I mean, I'm not sure how to explain. Uh, it was like super. Like we were just not a team, I would say, last week. We are like super disconnected. Um, maybe words cannot describe, maybe like the mood was not it. Like everyone was not really feeling into it. So maybe it, it was actually good, like work as a reality check for us because I think we came with pretty good confidence coming up against Fnatic. And we really thought that we could actually beat them, but they actually really stomped us like a yeah. lot. And it's like, we just, they made us realize what we actually need to work on. Because if we want to go towards, we need to make top two. And of course, if we want to make top two, we cannot be shaking today against SK. So like the journey started actually like the day after Fnatic beat us. I know that at the beginning of the year, I can't remember if it was you or Nuke uh, saying this in interview, but basically the fact that BDS could get overconfident sometimes and that you forget your League of Legends when you get overconfident, do you think that was the case and you overestimated Fnatic, for instance? Hey, I mean, 
I'm not sure if we if we underestimated them, but maybe we just came into the best of like with the too light mood because maybe we're maybe we're like unconsciously, of course, because we would still wanted to win, but maybe unconsciously we're like, ah, it's okay, it's mm -hmm. okay if they win, right? Because we still have loser bracket, yeah. um, so it's like, you know, like this format makes it that it's a bit weird, like to actually know what you're actually playing for, and maybe we actually got like the hard part of this format, which is. You still have a loser bracket in, in season finals, so it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now that we don't have any more chances, we just need like to go full all in, and we just cannot stop here. Uh, I want to talk about the run that you may have ahead of you guys a bit later, but let's stay on the positive ends on what happened today. Uh, your mid laner was praising you for playing a good Cassio top lane. He got Kia player of the series today, uh, being the best performing member of BDS. Is it something that you agree on? That's the fan, that's what the fan decided at least. No, like I, I do agree with this statement. Okay. Uh, I also do think that Shio, with his uh, really supportive jungle, yeah. <laughs> like Dutri and Sejuani, you know, when Shio plays Dutri, he's always happy. So it's <laughs> like I, I think he actually played super well, and um, it was also like one of our like main focus to. Uh, like having sure really close to his laners overall, like like not ignoring me, not ignoring mid, or nor ignoring bot as well. It's like it was our main focus coming up into this week, and I'm really happy with what he actually showed and what he actually showed, you know, as a team in general, because it was like the BDS that we we're supposed to know. Yeah. And um, seeing that makes me like super happy and give me a lot of hope, especially for last, next week because we can be facing G2, I guess. So yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a really difficult matchup next week if you are facing G2. I do want to just mention as well, today we saw a lot of level 1s from you guys. And throughout the split, we saw a lot of lane swaps as well. You were kind of the, the lead in Europe for the game starts at level 1. Is that something you expect to be able to continue through the rest? Or was it just an SK sort of focused idea? I, I mean, like in general, how, how we view like level 1 as a team, we think that it's super important because the game actually starts the moment you leave base, basically, and it's like there's always like a strategy that you can have from level one that can actually just le le legit, legit, sorry, uh, win the game. Actually, level one. So, like, we tend to focus a bit on it, but not having too much because if we have like a partner on level one, then maybe maybe enemy team can like scout us and they're like, oh, they like to do this. So we try to take it a bit chill, you know. We like trying to improvise a little bit sometimes, and yeah, we just take it from there. I mean, that's the thing. That's what I was wondering, actually. Is it the kind of place that you cook during the stream, uh, d during the scream uh, week and everything? Or do you just come up with them on the fly because you don't want to have the risk of someone just finding out? Or like, uh, how much time do you spend actually coming up with this? Um, I don't know, cheesy early game plays in the I mean, to game. be fair, like the level ones, uh, I would say most of them are like legit not planned because okay. it happens with the information that you guys, that you actually get from level one. Let's say someone spots legit, some, someone spots top, so we know they don't have vision bot side. You can sneak away into bot and maybe kill someone. Um, so it's like, this is not something that you can actually plan even from scrims because it also depends a lot on draft. And, and you cannot actually just pre-shot an entire draft. It, it cannot happen, right? Mm -hmm. And also, let's say you scream a team, you need to play the exact same draft that you will be playing against on stage. Yeah, never happen. That often. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's mostly improvisation, basically. Focusing on BDS, uh, moving on. I have to be honest, you got us worried. Uh, looking at last week, especially. <laughs> but when I listen to you, it feels like you were always in control. And that last week was just a fumble. Didn't get you worried at all? Yeah, I wouldn't say that <laughs> last week. <laughs> ah, there it is. <laughs> I wouldn't say that last week we're in control. Um, but um, the most important part is when you actually get beaten up so much, you yeah. still need like to, you know, stand up again and fight for your objective. And our ob objectives are clear. We want to go towards. And Fnatic beating Fnatic beating us means that we have to go top two. So it's like life is like that. So yeah. we know what to, now we actually know what we want and what we can actually play for. We know who we have to beat in order to reach what we want. So everything is basically just straightforward at this point. We're starting to build a history between you guys and Fnatic. Actually, <laughs> taking you down, you're yeah. going to have to take revenge. Of course, yeah. They beat us for the MSI. Um, yeah. Even even last year, actually, um, they, they did beat us uh, in season finals as well, and then we had, uh, and then we finished like fourth place, and then we had to face the Golden, Golden Guardians at Worlds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, if, if, every time during like important matches, they actually beat us. So yeah, maybe we'll get our revenge. I, I'm not sure. Hopefully Let's see. Hopefully so. At some point, um, Medic. Moving forward, it means that we have to say goodbye to SK. Yeah. Uh, we're not gonna see them until next year, and. 
I'm sad for the way they ended the year, especially because they, they gave us hope, especially after week one. It was like, is it going to be the same case of SK performing well in the first two, three weeks? They actually held the distance for once, but not quite enough. Yeah, ended the top of the regular season in summer, the yeah. same scoreline as you guys at eight and one. I thought the addition of Rahel and Luan would actually be a, a huge bolster to this team, and it was. But then it really felt like their mid game began to let them down. And we, we, today we kind of had the, the comparison of BDS, who are greater than the sum of their parts, right? Each individual is good, but together as a unit, they play incredibly well. Whereas SK, individually, one player would stand out from time to time, but you would never have this cohesive mid game mm -hmm. that really allowed them to accelerate the game. You saw it especially in game one, right? Uh, it just didn't work for them. I think Irrelevant is a player I've got my eyes on for next year. Incredibly good top laner, one of the better top laners in our league. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we'll see him back on the stage. I hope we'll see all the players back on Definitely. the stage. Definitely. It is going to be an interesting off-season, I expect, uh, for SK. Obviously waiting for uh, statements online uh, to hear about what happened from then today. But let's stay focused on the winners and the teams we're going to keep on seeing in season finals with the bracket. Because, Adam, you put it right on X last week. If you want to make Worlds, you got to go far. And it might be G2 next week, but it also might be GX. What do you think of the matchup tomorrow? I'm telling you, GX are actually the goat right now. <laughs> Uh, they have the go Jackies, and Jackies will probably gap caps tomorrow. Ooh. Um, no, actually, no, the, GX will actually get absolutely demolished, I think. <laughs> but, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, like, to be fair, I, I really want, like, unironically, I really want G2 to win because I don't want to go to Munich without beating G2. You know, they've been actually beating us, like, this entire year, and it would be, like, good that we go to top two without beating G2, but it, it feels wrong in a way. You know, no, for I example, like it actually feels wrong. You go to Worlds without beating G2 a single time this year. Yeah. Nor, like, you don't beat either G2 or Fnatic. It feels weird, you know, like, they just smack you the entire year, but, and you still go to Worlds without beating them, so, yeah. Something seems unfair, unfinished business yeah. if you don't have to, uh, to beat G2. Reminder here, uh, you will face this winner next week, but next week is not going to be a Saturday, Sunday as this week. It's going to be Friday and Saturday. We will remind you, of course, uh, on socials throughout the weekend. But yeah, schedule shifting a bit for next week. Medic, we heard it from Adam. Uh, GX getting absolutely demolished. I air quotes here tomorrow. Do you agree on that? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I love Jackie's. I think Giant X, like, uh, from what I've heard of scrims as well, at times they're doing really well in scrims. But yeah. G2, they, they should just be the better team. Like Lane for lane, they should be better. Overall map movements, they should be better. So my expectation is we have BDS versus G2. And as you say, that's, that's your battle to overcome. And G2 already going to Worlds means that if they get knocked out, it's the two finalists, which is kind of a, a nice culmination to yeah. the year, right? The two teams in the season finals will be joining G2 at Worlds. They made it interesting. I mean, G2 losing made it interesting for the rest yeah. of the teams. Once again, Adam, congrats on Thank winning you. today. And uh, looking forward to seeing what BDS can bring next week. And that's all for us here on the side of the studio. We'll be back tomorrow, of course, to see who BDS has to face in order to go to Munich. And that's all for us here today. Have an amazing night. See you tomorrow. I like the wait. <laughs> As he flushes out and gets down to the back end of the fight. As Ice and Shao getting chased down by this angry, light-eating monster. No wonder that he played it. It cleans out. I'm BQ, 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 triple Q. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Wait, wait. We're Blade Sail, baby. Nice, mate. Oh, my goodness. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, nice, Okay, guys. They're really bad, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can only win by teasing level 1 and shit like this, so let's be careful about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Niski here, who's about to die, he should have gone to the website, Use the code LEGEND15 Niski! Phosphorus bomb, auto attack, it's first blood over to BDS. He's deep, he has to e. straight away the flash comes out as well to Luan, he wants a hand, but I won't let him get away, no, no, no. Yeah. Some shouting on stage. Oh, Rocket. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Okay. Well, it's great, but Adam shocks him in or again, but in the pit jam. He's just trying to take the Baron. He eventually knocks it down. Kills this flash. And for SK, I mean, that's still as breath of a line as you can get at this point in the game. That was a quick one, guys. One well plate. One more week. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Baron, you guys are stalling by then. Uh, one more week before vacation. That's good. Ah, <laughs> oh, let's go. <laughs>